Okay, guys, it's time for a calm refuge. This is going to be our painting today. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to welcome you to a very calm and restful type of painting. We're going to be doing this fishing hut on the shore. This was a photograph from Unsplash and this little hut is on the shore of a fjord in Norway. It just, it actually looks like something that you'd see here in the Pacific Northwest also. And I just liked the clouds. I liked that sort of light area back here, the kind of gathering storm, or it's just passing through. But we've got a nice warm, dry place to stay in when the rain starts to fall. I do have a traceable up on my patterns and templates page on my website. <laughs> There we go. All the words. And the link is right here in the chat. Thank you guys so much to everyone who's coming into the chat. I really appreciate it. I love that you guys, I've got a group of people who are like stalwart. They're coming in and they're hanging out with me every day. I'd like to enjoy, I'd like to enjoy I love enjoying everybody being here, and I'd like to invite anybody else who wants to just have a quiet and peaceful time in my studio as I chat while I paint a picture, and I try to help you out doing the same thing. I'm using the Turner Acryl Gouache. This is an acrylic gouache paint, which means that it is matte and it is permanent after it's dry. So when you put down a layer and let it dry, you can layer right on top of it, just like regular acrylic paint. But it always has this soft, velvety look to it, and it's just making my heart sing right now. Thank you guys so much for everybody coming in. I appreciate you being here, and we're gonna get started on this. I have not pre-done my background yet, because there's a couple layers of color going in. We have this, we've got sort of a gray, bluish gray. Then it goes to a darker band here in the middle. And then we're going to go down to a dark green. To, just to get it laid out in our three zones. We'll dry it really quick. And then we'll put the traceable on top of it to get the little house and the tree because really that's all there is. It's a really straightforward painting today. So I'm going to switch on over, boom, to a slightly different view. We're going to take the half inch st snap stroke brush, boom, right there. This is by Princeton and it is a little bit longer than a bright, but not quite as long as a flat. So I'd like to, well, hello from Seattle. Hello. Are you guys having beautiful weather up north? I'm down in the Portland, Vancouver area, so we're having lovely weather. I'm just going to actually take a bigger brush. Let's take a bigger brush. This is a, a whole one inch by Simply Simmons, and it's a flat wash. I'm just going to get some paint on, or water on here so the paint will move. And you, if you do this on a canvas, you can do the same thing. You can get your canvas a little bit wet and it will help your paint move around with the acrylic also. So, ooh, that's, that's looking awfully bright. I may need to lower my lighting here. That'll be, that I hope will be better. So I'm taking some white and I'm just going to be talking through the paint because you can't really see my palette. So I'll just talk through the paint. <laughs> talk through the paint. The white, a touch of Prussian blue and a touch of black to kind of get, you know what? Let's just go to the, the wide view for a minute. I'm getting a grayed out blue, more gray, touch of red in there, I think. 
Ooh, that's getting us a good storm cloud type of gray. This is our background color. And by putting it onto that wet paper, it moves so much easier. So I'm taking this lighter gray blue type color all the way down. Ooh, that was a lot more water than I expected. All the way down like this, just side to side, covering the whole thing. Until I get down to about here, where I want to darken that up and make it a little bit, it's still gonna be washed out, but this is where those mountains are gonna go. So I'm just going to get it dark down here. Look at that. We just, a couple strokes of the brush. You don't have to fuss with this too much. Now I'm gonna lighten up that color same color, but I'm going to lighten it up here for in the middle. All right. Yes, you can use a mister on your canvas. This is where the water is. And then right down here, I'm, it looks like I'm shortening up my uh, grass area and where the, tr where the little hut's going to be. Maybe zooming in just a little bit. And we'll just get some variation in that water right there. I like how gouache can go onto paper like watercolor. So this is giving us that basic deeper tones. Now we can go back into that sky with a little bit more of the dark gray. Paint's still wet. And I'm going to come into this upper corner and start working my way across with some of that darker tone, slightly different. Start building layers. Maybe a little bit, little bit darker, a little more blue, a little black. Get that gray in there. Ooh, there we go. and just move that around. Because then we've got, you know, variation in the sky. We we don't want it to be to be a flat color. We want this to have some variation, but once we get it put in, we really don't want to mess with it anymore. Go ahead and zoom in now. Maybe not Maybe this one. There it is. There it is. That's better. Now you can see that a little better. Hope that we're focused. Yeah, that looks focused. It's just soft and fuzzy because the paint is soft and fuzzy. And it's sort of darker down here. But then there's that light space. And we want to keep that light in there also. And what's the question? Does, Step in. Does gouache dry as fast as acrylics? Gouache dries as fast as acrylics? Yes. Yes, it does. It dries as fast as acrylic, It, but you can also, you want to leave the door open just a little bit so it doesn't slide, uh, squeak back. It does. There's a, there's a tub behind there that you can keep it open. Okay. There we go. All right. So I am... It is lovely and serene. It's a very calm type of painting. I am, I do have this up on a slight angle, which is actually not a bad thing. There we go. This is nice because we're getting that variation in the sky. Now I'm going to go ahead. This is, this is dry now down right here where the mountain went in. So I'm going to take a bit more of that dark color and the blue into my white, the dark color, the black, the jet black and blue and white, but more of that dark to give it almost a, a gray type of tone. And now I'm going to go ahead and 
on the edge of the brush, I'm sort of making a little mountain shape and then flowing down to the edge of the water. And then I'm going to pull down and brush across staying away from that top edge because that top edge is what made that mountain or the, the little range there. Then I'm going to change the tone up. I want to make that behind there much lighter. And I should have put that in first, but we're giving it some layers. There. And then we'll come back to a darker, much heavier, darker mountain or hill range in front. And I'm going to take the edge of my brush again and much darker. Boy, there's a lot more white in my brush there. And just sort of wiggle it across and fill it in. gives us those soft, out of focus hills in the background without a ton of work. Look at that. What's going to make this all pull together is the foreground. So I want to go ahead and put a little bit of this dark actually right along that edge. Try and smooth out the edge of that for the water back there in the background. Just smooth that out. My paper has warped some, so I'm kind of working with a, a paper that's going up and down a little bit. It's okay. That happens. That totally happens. I'm actually going to take this hill up a little bit. The reference is there so that you can know what type of colors you're looking for. It's not to keep you from using your own imagination and making your own decisions though. So I want to take a little bit of a darker hill flowing down, maybe coming up higher and maybe even using a little bit of that bluish tone. Give us a little bit of an edge right in front, you know, There we go. It's nice to be able to do little landscapes and just have a calm and easy feeling going. Oh, thank you so much. I love sharing different techniques. So now I did not clean my brush completely. See, there's still paint in here. I am going to take it into the water, give the water a little bit of some bounciness. There's some, there's some wind blowing across that water, but I'm just going to tap it in and sort of work it back and forth a little bit. Maybe grab a little bit of the white and make back there a little lighter. The water horizon, the level of the water in the background. Remember, the water is going to be reflecting the color of the sky. So if your sky is really gray, your water is going to be gray. That looks pretty good. Let's see. Now, we've got a bit lighter down here in the very front. There's still texture, though. And yes, the bank is going to be coming up over some of this and the little, our little refuge from the storm is going to be coming up over it. But we just want to get some texture and some variation. There we go. <laughs> now I'm rinsing out my brush really well. Sorry, I just knocked another brush down. And 
wipe it off and now this time you see when I wipe off my brush there's no paint left in it I'm going to set it over here to the side for a second and I'm going to use now I'm using a heat tool I could use a hair dryer if I had one on low heat but I'm holding it back away from it since I don't have a variation on my temperature setting here but it's the air moving across that makes it dry and I'm not going down in close on it I'm actually a good foot and a half here away from the canvas or the paper I'm painting on 140 pound watercolor paper if there's uh, if you're interested in any of the information for the materials that I'm using down below in the more information box I have all the links for the materials and for all the different ways that you can help support my channel if you're new here thank you for being here and remember to click that like button subscribe to the channel and turn on all your notifications so you'll be notified when I go and do new videos I'm doing live videos this month Monday through Friday 9 15 a.m. Pacific time on Mondays and 12 15 Pacific time on Tuesday through Fridays and we are just having a fun time doing a lot of different paintings for acrylic April so now what I want to do is get I'll zoom out so you can see better there we go I'll move my paint out of the way <laughs> I'll move the palette up there there we go so now what I need to do is I need to get my little traceable tra put on I don't need to do anything with the sky really the only thing I'm going to do is put that loose line in here for my um, bank and where the little hut is going and where that pretty tree is going I'm going to use some gray Sarral wax free transfer paper because I've had some people asking how do you get that transferred on there this is how I'm going to do it. And you can tape everything down and make sure nothing shifts. I'm basically going to figure out where's the bottom edge of my paper. Where's the bottom edge of my, my land. Where's the side? Here, we'll do it this way. I don't want this to be dead center. I want my, my little house to be over just a bit. So I'm actually going to shift to the right. So now the edge of my the edge of where my water is right here I'm bringing this line just above that edge so that way it can be incorporated into the edge of the grass and it looks like the water is behind it so now I'm going to just slide this in keeping my my paper still you can tape it all down. Now my paper underneath is a bit wobbly. That's okay. I am taking just a, this is a hard lead. The leads are like these long sticks in the Statler mechanical pencil. So I'm using that because I know that it's going to, to press hard enough to transfer. And I am just, but I'm not having to press hard. I'm just doing a little little scribble I'm going to draw my little house on and this is a basic little house basic little box very simple perspective and you don't have to even know how to do perspective to do this it's your standard little house that you would have done when you were a kid pretty much triangle on the roof door and a window and if you were being really fancy, the edge of it going over to the side. And then there's the grassy edge going along here. I'm just doing some wiggly scratches. And then the tree. This tree is really very basic. It's more like a big shrub. And if that's easier for you to think of it, instead of like a tree and then I'm going to put a few of these little grassy lines in not even really paying attention to where they are 
just to get the angle. Now, it's very light because I didn't press super, super hard. You don't need to press super hard. Let's see, can you see it on there? So you can see how this landed just above the edge of the water. Now my little house is below, my little house looks like it's below the edge of that um, horizon. I think I might make this a little bit bigger. So I'm actually going to bring my little lines up, following the same lines. See, that's the cool thing is you can just follow the same lines that are there. I'm just going to make it a little bit taller. Just so that it goes up into that mountain edge just a bit. Does that help you guys to see that you can change things? You, you're not, you don't have to be tied to the original. And you know what? I need to bring that out this way just a little bit. Bring out the edge of that roof. Maybe even a little more. See? Like that. We'll get this in now with actual painting it. Go back to there. Watercolor pencils work really great. They do. I just didn't grab one. I could have grabbed a watercolor pencil. Um, but that's okay. I'm going to, the gouache actually covers really nicely. I'm going to put in, let's see. I'm going to put the base color of yellow ochre with a little bit of Prussian blue. to get the, the, the undertones and then we'll put the house in and then we'll put the, and the, and the tree. So what I'm going to do is bring this right up to the edge. I'm putting it in going at a slight angle because that's the angle that the actual grasses are going to be going. Get your brush wet. The gouache is much, much more opaque than the regular acrylic paint for some reason, especially when you add white to it. So we're just getting the grasses put in just like that. By doing this, we won't have as much work as we go along. I'm all for limiting the amount of work we have to do. All right. Maybe I'll, I may go ahead and put some of that lighter color in, that sort of mid-range mid area. The grasses are blowing to the side. There we go. And maybe even a little bit more. This flat brush, this uh, Princeton Snap, has been working really well for this. But see how I'm keeping the, keeping the line going to the side. And I think I'll take a little bit of that other green for down here in the very front. giving us some variation. This green will be going into the tree too. A little bit of it blowing over the top. Wow, that's almost, that's almost all put together already.
I like things that go together quickly like that. We're going to go ahead and rinse this green out of the brush. Really, really rinse. Make sure that it's really clean. We're going to take some of this permanent red. Did I go through the colors? I may, have, may not have gone through the colors. We have jet black. Here we go. We have jet black, permanent red, Prussian blue, permanent green mid, burnt sienna, permanent yellow, yellow ochre, and titanium white. Oh my goodness, we're this far into the into the show and I just now got the colors out there. I'm sorry. I'm taking some permanent red and some Prussian blue. Oh wow, that makes a deep purple. That's pretty. But add a little bit more of that red to it. This is the undertone of our building. So I want to just get that on there. Make sure your paint is flowing. This is not a place to have a, a dry brush. We want to get our building put on in nice, simple, easy strokes. You don't want your brush to be one that's going to um, split and splay on you. I need to rotate to get at a better angle. So I can get those nice sharp lines without having to do any real hard work. A nice sharp edge on your brush makes a huge difference. Now I'm going to go ahead and wiggle this color right down into the top of those grasses. Kind of at a random, random little edge. And then the next step is going to be just taking a bit more of that Prussian blue into that red that we made. Make a darker version, maybe a touch of burnt sienna. Ooh, that's nice. Let's see if that's darker. All I did was set my brush down, wiggle it to get that nice straight edge for the back of the house, and then bring it forward. And that's all we have to do to get that little building looking like it has dimension. We're gonna keep that same darker color and we're going to set the brush down and I'm going to use this to put the door on and then we will adjust it. Actually need a little bit more dark. Take a little more blue into that. Get a nice door on there. This is very much a Bob Ross type of thing here, you know, where you just set your brush down, slide it across and that's what you got. I'm going to put, there's like a big window space up here, but it has wood shutter on it. Just like that. And then I'm going to take, let's see, some of that burnt sienna in the dirty brush with just a tiny touch of white. And we're going to get some like little planks on this house. We're just touching it kind of like doing the, the palette knife like Bob did. And if you get to a spot where you just can't quite do it with the full length of the brush, just drag it down. There, you see how quick and easy that is, eh? So let's see here. The roof is a lighter color. I think it's more like a tin roof, but it's got its iron tin. So it's got a bit of a, 
Let's see. This brush is a little bit... Oh, well, it will work for this edge. So we get that little rusty, rusty tin roof feel there. It'll work for this edge. Comes down farther than the edge of the, the little house. And then we'll go across and we'll sort of fill in. Just following the angles that are already drawn on. Oh, that's working. So just like that. Now we're gonna take a bit more of that white. There's sort of a white edge on the, on the edge of the house. And there's a little bit of a white molding around the door. And there's actually like little windows. So I'm just going to give it the idea that there's little windows. What do you think, guys? How's this looking? I'm not seeing my chat move, so I don't know. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying that. Um, so now I want to get a little bit more dark right under the edge of the... Right here. It got a little bit light. So I'm just going to take a bit of black into my red. That actually makes kind of a purpley color too. That jet black has a bit of a blue tone to it. Let's just get that shadow in there. And a bit more of a shadow right here. That is actually looking good. Yes, I, I am happy. Thank you. And then a little bit, just some texture. It's not, you know, you don't have to have a perfect, a perfect house here, a perfect building or perfect lines. This is an old fishing jack. It's a refuge. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get that tree going in. And I think we are going to do a bit of the, well, let's first start off with a round brush and get some of those trunks going in. I'm taking the Burnt Sienna with a touch of Prussian Blue to get sort of a nice, um, don't know if I get that where you can see it. Burnt Sienna and Prussian Blue right here. And we're going to just start throwing in a few of these chunky bits. And I'm not too worried about making them perfect or making them get really skinny. I To go out to my skinnier parts, I think I'm going to use my skewer. So that's probably all I'm going to do with the, the brush. Now I'm going to pick up some of that... pick up some of that brown tone and start scratching up. Whoa, that was a big blop of water. I had wet, wet the tip of that stick. See how I'm taking care of that though? Just grab a dry brush and you can just pick it up. Not worried about this. We're gonna be putting green leaves and things in there too. All right, let's see if we can get some scratchy little branches going up though. Sometimes it's easier to put things that are super, super fine with something that's a, a sharp or hard tip. It looks a little messy right now. Don't worry. We will get this. because all of those green branches and things are going to go on here, green leaves. Just getting some texture, really. Places that will hold the branches, or hold those leaves up. 
You're not going to see a ton of it. But see, you don't have to have super expensive tools. You can use you can use a stick. And now I am going to take just a round brush. This I'd say this is probably like a number two round. This came with my uh, Turner Acryl Gouache. And so now I'm going to take some of that mid green and the yellow ochre and a touch of Prussian blue and a little bit of the burnt sienna and just get a mushed up color. Maybe a touch of some permanent yellow. And now we're going to go in and get that that fun little tree. We're just going to dab, dab, dab. Leave some spaces because we want to add some other colors. We don't want it to be just one solid green blob. You do want to have some variations in your tones. Our little bushy tree is going, is going into a much different space than the one that was there. Mmm, stuffed green peppers. That sounds like yummy. This color right here reminds me of stuffed green pepper almost. You've seen some of those lovely. We're going to take lovely peppers in the grocery store. I'm taking some of that bright yellow and working it in. And some of that yellow ochre and the green. A little bit more down, lower. Leave some space. Let the birds and the squirrels have places to run. Lots of squirrels would love this little tree. I'm going to put a little bit of some darker, some of that darker brown tone. Dark it up, dark it up get a little bit of blue on it. Make some of those little branches under there get a little bit darker. Some of those trunks. A little darker. This is a really simple painting, so don't 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 try and make it harder than it has to be. taking some of that Prussian blue and that yellow ochre, wiping the, <laughs> wiping the paint off of the brush, the paint, wiping the water off of the brush. There we go. Wipe the water off the brush, taking, just trying to get kind of a dark, dark, dark green color, just bouncing around. I'm going to come back here. That's not very dark. Well, we can, Use the color. It's darker than the yellow ochre. Might work down here in front. There we go. We're just getting some of the texture in there. You know, not, not too worried about making it look exactly like the, the painting, the photograph, the original. So we've got some really loose, kind of sketchy, just letting the brand, the brush sort of skip around. Not too, not too worried about making it look just like the reference. Remember, just don't go bing, 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 bing straight across, because if you do that, you'll end up with it looking like everything was cloned on. Okay, bringing that, the grasses and stuff now right down in front of that little hut. Yeah, the photograph is really pretty. I hope that, I hope I'm doing justice to it with the, with my painting. So then there's kind of like a little swale right here where it gets a little dark. 
alongside of the, the little shack. Maybe that's where the path is going down on the other side. Then there's some grasses that are growing up in front of it. We get dark underneath of the tree. You know, just, we're really getting close to the end on this one. It's a much, much quicker type of painting. A little bit brighter green now. So we're coming away from the that shadow under the tree, coming out into the yellow ochre and maybe a bit of that permanent yellow. Spark it up just a little. Maybe there's some little wildflowers or something starting to grow. There we go, just a few sparks here and there. If you do that, it gives it a sense of depth. A, a little bit more sense of being a real place. There we are. Really dark green right down at the very, very front. And again, I'm keeping everything moving that direction, which is kind of interesting because it's moving that direction, but your eye comes back this way because of all of the... Um, interest right here with the little building and the tree. So it's nice to get things moving through the painting. All right. And truthfully, I am getting very ready to, oh, you know what? I really want to darken up that little hill behind there. Maybe put one more little hill. Yes, it's, it's as if we walked a little bit closer to the water. I do want to darken up a little bit of that hill right there. So, but not, not totally dark. Not totally dark, just darker. More to the, more to the black side than the blue. There we go. And I'm just going to look at that and right here, I'm just going to put in a bit more of a hill. Just, just because I want something that's a little bit darker back behind. Make it it's actually becoming a little bit more Pacific Northwesty type of hills coming down to the water, I think. Maybe a little bit more texture in there. Cute and simple. Sometimes that's what we need. We need something that's just, just sweet and simple. Yeah, see it needed a little bit of something here. Just needed that little bit more. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Maybe we'll swing that up off the edge right there. And it looks like I did. I had gotten a drop of water right in the middle. So the way to fix that is just to take a little bit more paint. <laughs> and we're just going to take a little bit of white with a touch of blue in it. And make sure and go whiter. than the space you're trying to cover. Never cover up the dot because then it just looks like 
you covered up something. But if you go in and cover a wider area, it's just like fixing a, a spot on a table. You don't just don't just fix the you know little one inch gouge. You fix a six inch by six inch space or a, or a twelve by twelve inch space. This is the same type of thing. We needed a little bit more light into the middle of the painting anyway, right? Give us a little bit of that hopeful look. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to sign this, and we're going to pull the tape off, and then we're done. How's that? I hope you guys have been enjoying this, that you... are enjoying the whole acrylic April. You know what? I'm going to have to uh, wipe, wipe that off because I went down over the tape. So we're just going to go like this and go boop, 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 boop. And add a little bit of green there, a little blue. And make sure and take that across so that it doesn't look like I was just fixing a boo-boo. See? Don't just fix it in one spot. Fix it in a couple. Something in one spot looks like a like a mistake. Something in multiple areas looks like you meant to do it. So, I'm going to take the tape off and then and then I'll sign it. So, let's Go back out to the desk-wide view. Oh, isn't that sweet? That is making me really, really happy. So this tape, pull it off at a very oblique angle, very tight angle away. So I'm pulling it down towards me, almost like 45 degrees, pulling it so that it doesn't tear the paper. And in those spaces where the paint, you know, came under the edge of the tape, I can just take white gouache and clean up those edges. Like that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to sign it now that I can see where the edge is. right here and there we go hey guys I want to thank you so much for hanging out for watching this video for liking subscribing sharing and for finding a safe and quiet little refuge in a crazy time in the world I really appreciate you being here. I have another fun video coming up tomorrow, and I hope that you will join me back here. Remember to do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you, and I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.